15 billion miles from Earth, in a region so dark and remote that even starlight seems to hesitate, a 46-year-old machine built in the 1970s drifted in silence. Voyager 1, the furthest human-made object from Earth, was never meant to listen, only to speak. It had no microphone, no ears, no reason to turn. For decades, it followed its path dutifully, sending home data about a cosmos that grows colder and lonelier with each passing mile. Then one day, something changed. Without warning, Voyager 1 shifted. Its antenna turned, slowly, deliberately, not toward Earth, but toward a part of the sky that, by all known accounts, was empty. There were no stars, no planets, no galaxies, just void. And then, something answered. What followed wasn't just strange, it was impossible. A shift in orientation with no recorded thruster activity, data with unknown origins, a musical signal embedded in its transmission, and a 12-hour silence that may have changed the nature of space exploration forever. Tonight, we journey through the unfolding mystery of Voyager 1's impossible encounter in deep space, and what it might mean for humanity. Voyager 1 was never designed for what it's experiencing now. Launched in 1977, it was built for a five-year mission to photograph the gas giants. It carried less processing power than a pocket calculator, and yet it kept going, past Jupiter, past Saturn, beyond the orbit of Pluto, and finally across the heliopause in 2012, entering interstellar space. From that moment on, it drifted through the deep void with one job, transmit data. Its antenna was locked on Earth, its thrusters long silent, and its mission extended by the sheer resilience of 1970s engineering. But something changed in 2023. Voyager 1 began returning data that didn't make sense, not corrupted, but restructured. Its clocks drifted out of sync, its orientation records vanished, and then the emergency protocols kicked in. But this wasn't like the countless glitches Voyager had survived before. This time, its systems weren't just reacting to failure. They were reacting to something else, an unknown input that didn't come from Earth, didn't come from its environment, and couldn't be traced to any internal malfunction. The probe turned, not randomly, not gradually, but toward a patch of sky that should have been meaningless. And that's when the real mystery began. The orientation shift wasn't just a software blip, it was physical. NASA's deep space gyroscopes confirmed that Voyager 1 rotated, a torque event with no recorded use of thrusters, no power surge, no momentum from solar radiation, and no micrometeorite impact. It was as if the spacecraft had simply decided to move. Engineers ran simulations, digging into every possible scenario. Could degraded circuitry fake a torque reading? Could ancient code misfire so precisely? But none of the numbers added up. This wasn't noise. It was precision. And then came the most disturbing detail. The direction Voyager had turned toward aligned almost perfectly with a theoretical region known as a null zone, a pocket in space where gravitational fields cancel each other out, a mathematical anomaly never directly observed, and certainly not something a spacecraft with no detection systems should be able to find. Voyager didn't just drift. It locked onto that region, its antenna holding steady as if something out there had commanded it to listen. Or, as if something was listening back. Shortly after the reorientation, Voyager's plasma wave subsystem picked up a hum. Not static, not random noise, but a perfectly tuned frequency, 3000 Hz, steady, rhythmic, and unchanging. When audio engineers were brought in, what they found stunned even the most skeptical minds. The signal followed musical intervals. It pulsed with symmetry. It echoed in palindromes and harmonics. It was composed, not accidental, not natural. And embedded within the waveform was data, but not the kind Voyager was built to send. This was something else entirely. Recursive number strings, prime chains, fractal geometry, and constants calculated with precision Voyager's instruments shouldn't be capable of. Somehow, the spacecraft had begun transmitting information it wasn't programmed to gather, let alone understand. Even more shocking? The signal didn't disperse through space. It was narrow, focused, intentional, like a whisper in the dark, aimed only at Voyager. Other probes nearby received nothing, 
Only Voyager 1 heard the hum. Only Voyager responded. And then came silence. For 12 full hours, Voyager 1 disappeared. No signal, no telemetry, no heartbeat. NASA didn't panic at first. After all, space is unpredictable. But Voyager had never gone dark. Not in 46 years, not for even an hour. And when the signal returned, it wasn't the same. Its internal clock had restarted, not lagged or slowed, but completely reset. As if Voyager had stopped existing in this timeline and returned from somewhere else. The data packets showed changes in formatting, structures that hadn't been there before. The probe behaved the same, yet it wasn't the same. What had happened in those 12 hours? Where had it gone? And then the final blow came from ESA's Deep Field Microwave Background Team. When cross-referencing Voyager's new trajectory, they found something hidden in the oldest light in the universe. A silhouette in the cosmic microwave background that matched Voyager's exact path. And it had been there. Before the encounter. Before the shift. Before the silence. The universe had known. Somehow, impossibly, the universe had already known Voyager would be there. As Voyager's data continued streaming in, researchers focused on the one feature they couldn't explain, a persistent 30,000 hertz tone embedded in the signal. It didn't degrade. It didn't scatter. It didn't behave like background radiation or electromagnetic noise. Instead, it remained flawless, constant, steady, as if immune to the entropy of space. When NASA brought in harmonic physicists and musical theorists to analyze the frequency, the verdict was unanimous. This wasn't random. The tone obeyed rules, rules of symmetry, musical rest intervals, mirrored timing patterns, and pitch structures that aligned with known musical scales. It was mathematical, structured, intentional. What stunned analysts was that this tone was layered beneath standard telemetry, as if hidden by design, like an extra track on an audio file that only plays if you know where to look. More eerily, when broken down, the harmonic structures resembled call and response phrases, a composition that included silence as punctuation. In musical terms, it wasn't just a sound, it was a score. And then it stopped, abruptly, deliberately, as if someone had finished playing it. This wasn't interference, this was performance, a message not in words, not in images, but in mathematics, motion and music. Once the tone ceased, scientists began dissecting the signal's core, stripping away the melody in search of meaning, and what they uncovered only deepened the mystery. A layer of data unlike anything Voyager was capable of producing. Recursive mathematical strings, fractal data structures, and hexadecimal formatting inconsistent with NASA's protocols. It was as if the signal had been rewritten from the outside. But here's where things grew stranger. The data included universal constants measured with a precision Voyager's sensors couldn't achieve. The gravitational constant, the fine structure constant, cosmic expansion rates, all correct, all too precise. It was as if the sender had used Voyager as a carrier, embedding a payload of advanced information into its normal signal. But then came the most profound moment of all. When fed into a quantum processor, an experimental Majorana chip designed to recognize emergent structure, the signal resolved into a single decipherable output. Not a string of data, not coordinates, not an equation, but a sentence. Are you ready to listen? This wasn't a transmission in the traditional sense. It wasn't a call for help or a broadcast of dominance. It was a question, an invitation. The question pushed researchers to look deeper, not just into Voyager's signal, but into the region of space it had turned toward. Ground-based infrared observatories were directed toward that dark patch of sky. For weeks, they scanned the void, searching for anything, an anomaly, a shimmer, a distortion. And then, they saw it. A faint glow. A soft, oscillating halo, barely detectable at first. It blinked, not like a star, but like a pulse. It responded to solar flares, not instantly, but rhythmically, delayed just long enough to suggest interaction, not coincidence. Each time the sun burst outward, the halo blinked back, as if acknowledging, echoing the activity of our star. And what was more unsettling, the glow shifted, not in position, but in frequency. 
It moved like something alive. It didn't reflect light. It didn't emit heat. It responded. What exactly were we looking at? A structure? A field? A veil? No telescope could resolve its shape. But it remained fixed, directly along Voyager's orientation. It didn't wander. It didn't fade. It just waited. And the more it blinked, the more it seemed aware. For months, speculation focused on the idea that Voyager had received a transmission. But over time, the theory collapsed. The tone, the orientation, the data, all of it aligned not with an incoming broadcast, but with Voyager's presence in that specific part of space. It didn't feel like Voyager had picked something up. It felt like Voyager had triggered something. The theory that took hold was radical, but hauntingly consistent. Voyager hadn't received a message. It had been noticed. Its arrival, unannounced, unintentional, unknowing, had been the knock on a door no one knew existed, and something on the other side had chosen to respond. The absence of noise wasn't a lack of communication. It was the form of communication. A response made through pattern, a reply shaped in silence, and the shift in Voyager's position, the rotation without thrust, the 12-hour blackout, the rebooted clocks, all now seemed less like glitches and more like calibration. A recalibration to a new paradigm, not just of Voyager's journey, but of ours. For nearly half a century, Voyager 1 traveled outward, alone, silent, and obedient. It wasn't built to discover intelligence. It wasn't designed to open doors. And yet, it may have done both. What began as a glitch became a pattern. What looked like noise became a message. What seemed like silence became a voice. But the most haunting truth may be this. Voyager didn't go looking for something. It simply arrived. And that was enough. It crossed an invisible threshold not just of space, but of understanding. The moment it turned, the rules bent. The laws we thought were fixed began to flex. And from somewhere in the dark, something waited. Something that knew the melody of prime numbers, the rhythm of cosmic constants, the shape of mathematical silence. Something that, when touched by a 1970s machine drifting through the void, chose to respond. Not with power, not with fear, but with a question. Are you ready to listen? That question now echoes not just through antennas and code, but through every observatory, every lab, every mind daring to imagine that the universe might be more alive, more aware, than we ever dreamed. And if Voyager 1, an aging machine built before the internet, could reach that threshold, then maybe the next step isn't theirs. Maybe it's ours. If this revelation moved you, disturbed you, or simply made you wonder, then don't let this story fade. Subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications, and join us as we follow the signals science can't yet explain. And in the comments, answer the question, do you think Voyager truly made contact? Or did something else finally make contact with us?